Hmm. Oh well. Oh, what? 44% battery? I just charged it. Maybe there are updates? October 5th, 2020. Oh wow. Oh well. Yeah, okay, I need to take a photo of Yoda in a new one. Wait, what? Why did it switch to... Something went wrong. Oh man, yeah, I forgot. I need to use a magnet in order to turn on the camera. Okay, what do we do with this now? Huh. Okay, okay. How do we... How do we approach this? Oh dear. Okay, first issue, I cannot join Wi-Fi. I mean, I have Mac address filtering and, well, it doesn't provide me anywhere to see what Mac address does it use. I have to disable my security in order to connect this thing. What? What do you want to activate? Yeah, yeah. Really? Give me a sec. Okay, face ID, now Apple knows how I look. Why does it take so much time? Just a password, that's it. Move data from Android, I don't think I can. And honestly, I'm not really sure what I want. Let's choose don't for now. Okay, that's something that I have to create now. Create a free help ID. Oh dear, I'm going to regret this, right? Okay, I mean, this is a creation of a new ID and everything, so I can understand that, why it takes time. But the previous parts? I totally don't. For now, let's use Express and we'll customize probably later. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, let's press continue. Let's hope that nothing will be stolen because of Apple. I highly doubt it. I don't care. Let's choose the dark one. I mean, I use the dark mode on my Android, I guess it will be okay here. I guess we can use the standard. Welcome to iPhone Swipe. Oh dear. How do I... Yeah, that's what I... How do you put widgets? Anything? You know what? Let me try to configure things and we'll see how it goes. So, what the heck is going on? Uh, my pixel is pretty much dying, I'd say. And I can find a phone that I really want. And no, I don't want this thing. And you'll understand soon what's going on. So basically I'm soon going to get an opportunity to get a new phone a little bit cheaper, but it doesn't seem like I have something particular in mind that I can get. Honestly, I'd wish I could survive till the Pixel 6 or get some huge discount on, I don't know, OnePlus 9 Pro or something. It doesn't seem that way and my Pixel is kind of, yeah, in a pretty bad shape, but it works. Now, I'm already prepared here uh, with all the tools and basically uh, I have a camera module and a battery that I can replace on my Pixel 2 XL 
and then it will pretty much work uh, still without any new updates but I will be able to install some ROM or something and even a pixel uh, experience ROM or something and it will work. Now the thing is I'm not fully sure that I'm capable of replacing those modules and everything will be fine. And for that I need to somehow secure myself with a temporary phone. And on that hand a co-worker provided me his kind of older iPhone and how should I say this? Uh, it's sort of a challenge to stay with this weird thing uh, for a week or so and honestly so far I don't think I'm about to survive this. I mean seriously uh, first thing I, I want now to unlock this thing. No you have to unlock it from the bottom. What? Why? Okay, I have a few thoughts on this and I'm about to open Google Keep. Uh, hopefully it will work on this thing. Uh, it took me a while, a few hours to actually move everything to this thing. I'm still searching where is Google Keep because I have no idea how to search things here normally or categorize or anything. It, it's so weird and uh, honestly stupid. You cannot just move icons wherever you want, widgets wherever you want. You have like sort of particular rules that we provided you. It's not like I can install a different launcher or something. Uh, anyways, let's just do a search. That's it. Google Keep, finally. Oh, I didn't even log into Google Keep. Okay, I did log in with my Google account basically everywhere here. So it shouldn't take much time. Here it is. Okay, Google works even on iPhone. At least most of the things do work. Sort of the way they are intended. Ah, seriously, this is so frustrating. Anyways, I have here a few notes. Let's go through them and see where we'll get. So basically, uh, I'm not used to the keyboard, so I mistyped everything, even my mail address when I created an Apple ID. Thankfully, that was easy to actually fix. You just change it there and it sends you a verification and you're good to go and continue. So at least that. Oh man, did you hear that? I have no idea how to change the notification sounds per app. I'm not even sure if it's possible. And it's not like I have much of a choice because the notification sounds are very limited. I have nothing good to say about it. Um, in Google Keep, you have like checkboxes that you can pretty much check. And that's it. Doesn't work. I cannot check the checkboxes on Google Keep. Okay, I have no idea. I just noticed it now. Now, while I was setting up this thing, I decided that I will do the data transfer later from my Android phone. Because it's just for a week. I wasn't sure that I want to do that. Then I decided that I do. And you know what? You cannot. You need to erase your phone. Erase your iPhone phone, sorry, and do it all over again. Why? I have no idea. In Android you can just go to settings and find wherever the data transfer is and pretty much transfer from another phone. I never did from an iPhone but from a different Android. It works, everything is fine. It's easy, you don't need to factor reset or erase your phone because of that, seriously. Now while setting this up I wanted to set my Wi-Fi. It's easy, you set here the password and everything is as usual, but I use MAC address filtering. In most of the cases, even in non-standard devices, you have some option to view the MAC address on the particular device, except some IoT devices that you don't have such GUI or something. But here I was expecting to normally view the MAC address of this thing and just write it down in my router and that's it, but no, you cannot. So I had to actually disable a security feature on my router in order to connect this thing. This is unsecure! Really? If that would be mine now? I would throw it in the camera. No, not in the camera, obviously. No, the camera didn't do anything bad. The camera is awesome. Now, okay, so I did decide to erase the iPhone because I didn't have yet anything on it. Quite similar, uh, just five minutes after I started with this device, I already need to reset it, but okay. Now, I reset it and I go to the data transfer and I begin all the procedure with my Pixel to Excel. It begins, I don't know why it failed. Oh well, failed so failed, let's try again. 
On the second attempt, it actually did work. It asked me what I want to transfer. I decided to transfer everything, though it's pretty much nothing except the camera roll, which I didn't really need, but I decided to try it for some reason. I'm not sure why. And honestly, that was a mistake. Because what happened next is it showed me that it will take almost two hours. During that time, I received a notification from my friend on my Pixel, and uh, normally I switched uh, to the application which it was on, on Telegram, and we spoke and everything, and I got back to the app, and it continued. On the iPhone, on the other hand, you couldn't do anything while the data transfer is on, and on Android, while you do data transfer, even from one phone to another, you can use it in the meanwhile without any issues. So, for some reason, after I got back to the app, it failed again, and again, and again. I'm not really sure how many times it failed. Eventually, it did work, I didn't choose the camera all this time, and it did finish after a few attempts with data transfer that had nothing in it, seriously, nothing, pretty much. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we did the data transfer. Next, right? Next, I do notice something really strange, but it fixed after some time. During the setup, it asked where you are, uh, what languages you use, everything, and it is connected to the internet. So NTP isn't a problem, right? I mean, you should see the correct uh, hour on your iPhone right away. I have no idea why, but it decided to show me the wrong hour. It's not a big deal, it did fix after some time. I have no idea why, what happened, but that's another thing that happened. After the setup, after the initial setup I should say, I opened the App Store because I want to download all my things like uh, Facebook, Telegram, uh, Canon Connect or whatever. And at the beginning you need to sort of create an iTunes ID. Apple ID wasn't enough, it's something separate. Why? I did put all the login details and everything, it asked for a credit card, I didn't want to obviously, and for some reason I had to enter my Apple ID password at least three times. Why? And then there's, uh, I'd say, a cool feature, but it's annoying, I'm pretty sure you can disable it, or at least I hope you can. When you install an app, you need to confirm the install with double tapping the power button. I don't know, sort of security feature probably, I guess you can disable it. It still does a face detect when installing, so... Now, face detect works fast and works well. I didn't try it with my head on, for example. Uh, that's right, probably it will lock or something. Okay, it's unlocked. It works. Okay, face ID or face detect or however you want to call it, works fine and actually more than fine. Uh, it should work even at night as far as I understood because of the uh, IR at the top with that ugly notch, but uh, I do notice the notch still after a few hours and it's not that the notch is annoying or something, it's the fact that those things here, the clock and the, all your notifications, what I wouldn't call it notifications, those things are somewhere there at the top hidden and I don't know, it's weird. Now that thing I can't say anything about Android because I didn't use any notch Android phone and even if I would, I would just disable the top bar because that's a feature, that's a normal, easy feature and I'm not really sure if that thing has it, but uh, I'm not even going to try to find it for now. Basically, as you can understand, things are annoying in this device, uh, it's just, I don't know, it's not for me. Anyways, let's continue with the next thing. Uh, finally, I entered my SIM card and there comes that part that you want to set your notification sounds. Now, in case of an Android, uh, I just go to the settings, I choose a ringtone from uh, whatever there is, or if I don't want to, I can just add another one with uh, a plus button on the top, or use some different app in order to download a ringtone, create a ringtone, whatever I want basically is possible. Here, you have some particular ringtones there that you can choose from, and then you can buy um, iTunes ringtones? Why would someone buy a ringtone that costs like a whole mp3 song? Or why would you do that? <sighs> you cannot add something custom at least, not by default from what I found so far. And I might be mistaken. And I'm pretty sure that people will hate me for this video because I do say a lot of bad things about the iPhone, but 
That's how I see it and I didn't even finish yet. Now uh, I use something called OpenVPN in order to connect to my home router from anywhere and iPhone does support it, I did find the app, everything is fine, but uh, I need to somehow get the file from the OpenVPN settings in order to put it in the iPhone. And the iPhone tells you in the app there are two ways to do this. Either you send it through mail, which is totally insecure, it does say it, uh, and I'm not using that thing, no way, just forget it. Or you can connect the iTunes and then somehow sync it? I'm not using iTunes, no way. Why can't it just transfer? I, I did actually get the file here. I mean, I can access a specific folder even from here with that file, but you cannot open it because it's not like opening by default, but by OpenVPN or anything. There's nothing to open this because OpenVPN isn't a standard file extension that an iPhone understands. So, gone via OpenVPN as well. Okay, let's continue, I guess. Siri. Okay, so about Siri. I'm not familiar with all the features in the iPhone and I'm not exactly familiar where is what and everything, but even an infant can well, an infant that can talk at least, can ask an assistant to open an app. So I thought to myself, okay, I'll stop for a moment, I need the Google Chrome and I cannot find it with all the mess in it. I'll just go to the settings, enable Siri to respond to the hot word, and I did, after a few minutes that I found the setting, and then I just asked Siri to open Chrome. Sorry, I cannot find that app. Okay, let's try again. Siri, open Chrome browser. Sorry, I cannot find that app. Siri, open Google Chrome. Cannot find that app. Google Chrome browser. Whatever I tried, it didn't work. I tried other things with Siri. Sometimes it searches. I don't know if it's Google or what, but it does use some search engine. Sometimes it does the search. You can search. Wow. With Google, I can do anything I want. And if I can't, there's a way to add it. Now, I know that there are things that Siri is capable of, but for me, Siri is useless. I don't know. It just doesn't like me probably because I don't like her. One of the main things that uh, we mostly use is uh, apps like chat, for example, Telegram, WhatsApp, things like that. For some reason they all look ugly on the iPhone. Uh, I, I didn't set up my WhatsApp because I have some hopes that I will be able to get my Pixel fixed soon and I will be able to hop back on my Pixel. I didn't even reinstall the watch, the smartwatch, the Wear OS that is working with iPhones as well, but I don't want to disconnect it because it sort of reformats the watch and why would you do that uh, if you want to go back? So for now I'm not doing that. All the cool things that move here, for example the unlock, I'm gonna try it like this, no, face ID, yeah, okay. So all those things, now don't get me wrong, the iPhone does work as normal and as intended I guess and everything, but when you use it, all those fancy animations and things that move, you know, when you're scrolling or something, it feels just too fancy, annoying and slows you down because it doesn't stop with your finger stopping. It continues slowly, like, uh, you know, slowing down or things like that. Why? If I stopped, I stopped. I don't know, weird things, I mean, yeah, it does look beautiful, right? But during that time I could already progress through different screens on Android with no issues. And this looks like someone went to an Android device to the debugging options and enabled the animations onto X10 or something like that just to mask how slow the device is. And yeah, in some particular places the iPhone is slow. Yeah, I did call an iPhone slow. Sorry, that's how it is. Now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this one is an iPhone XS Max, XS, I'm not fully sure, it's an iPhone 10 or sort of, from my colleague and it is going back to him. Now, in terms of hardware, it has two issues as far as I know, so the speaker uh, has some, I don't know, it probably ruined or something over the time, he had it for I think two years or so, he moved to a newer iPhone for one big reason that you cannot see actually and I don't know why. There was a lion across the whole screen, I did see it, I did see it today even, which on any normal device means 
that the screen is sort of broken. There is some sort of electrical issue with the screen and you are supposed to replace the screen or deal with this lion. It was an ugly purple or sometimes green lion. That's it. I, I don't know, it disappeared. You know when, actually, when I think about it? After my colleague had a new iPhone. Then he opened it up and didn't see that thing anymore. It did appear, actually, afterwards when I was trying to set it up. And then again, for some unknown reason, it disappeared. Apple is controlling your hardware from afar, so you place your iPhones or something. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy or something, but maybe. And I just got some weird vibration. I think Apple is angry at me. No, seriously, I have no idea what's going on with this phone. Why did it vibrate right now? I totally don't know. Seriously. I have no idea. I'm planning to try to use it for a week or at least something close to a week because I'm not really confident that I will be able to fix now the pixel and that I'll have the time today. And uh, for that, I already tested the alarm, well, I'll leave it with that, I will guess. And another thing is music. When I'm going to work, I'm listening to music. Now, I have a Bluetooth headphones. It won't be an issue probably to connect to an iPhone and I have NFC in my headphones. I guess this thing will... Why does it vibrate sometimes? I don't know. Anyways, uh, I guess it uh, will be okay to connect and everything, but I have nothing to listen on it. I mean, on my regular Android, I can use whatever app I want. I can listen to music that is locally on my phone, like mp3 files. I can uh, stream things, I can use free stream services, I can use paid ones, I can use hacked ones. Whatever is my choice, but on an iPhone, I mean, you can do streaming and everything, and you have free services, but they're limited and everything. You can play local music, and I actually did install here Resilio Sync, which is sort of a BitTorrent based file syncing application, which allows you to sync folders, files, whatever, between devices, whatever it is. So I did sync it between the iPhone and my computer. Uh, with my music folder and yeah, my music folder is here actually. I have mp3 files here with all my music, but nothing can play it. I mean, I can open each file and press play on that particular file and it will play and work. There is no way, even on DLC, to choose go to this folder and play from it. Didn't find a way. Great. I have nothing good to say about this, that's for sure. I've gotta be honest, the iPhone works and it works well, I'd say, but it's not for me. I mean, everything here is like finicky. It's not easy, even that people claim. And you know what? Actually, the device looks ugly without that case. I did put my SIM card in it and the device just, sorry, looks ugly. I don't know, on all those commercials and when you get new iPhones and Apple stores and everything, it looks really beautiful and nice, but after some time, it doesn't look better than any of my Android phones, whatever it was, whichever. And the OS is so weird and so locked down that I have no idea how will I survive this week. Now, if I did actually survive this week, the next part of this video will be sort of conclusions after that week. And if I didn't, I'll probably add another part which just will tell you that I didn't survive or something. Anyways, I'm going to use the light that is still here and try to fix my pixel right now. If it will break, at least I have something for this week. So let's see how that will go. And yeah, there will be a video on how I'm trying to fix the pixel. Not really sure if it will be only for members or for everyone, so don't get mad at me uh, because if it will be a failure, I'll still try to upload this video. So, yeah, iPhone challenge, nope, not happening. And yeah, if you guessed it, yeah, I'm shooting this video on my Google Pixel 2 XL, on my fixed one. Yeah, I finally did it and it works. And I having, I'm having second thoughts about this whole removal process. Thank you for watching this Demostech episode. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you won't miss any future video. And I'll see you on the next one.